we are still with normal probability distribution. This is a big topic in STAT, which is why we may have to devote uh, six or seven videos in all just for the topic of normal probability distribution. Normal probability distribution and the proportion of the population or, or the proportion of a sample. Again, let us recall our understanding of a normal probability distribution. Well, it is a probability distribution. And a probability distribution is supposed to tell us the probabilities of each outcome in the sample space of an experiment. That is how we understood probability distribution. A normal probability distribution would be a probability distribution of a continuous random variable and a continuous random variable such that when we write its probability distribution, it's going to be in the, in the shape of a bell. So this number's here, 34.13, 13.59, 13 2.14. They are supposed to tell us the probability of outcomes. Again, let us bring this back. Just to remind us, what is the use of a probability distribution? So a probability distribution can be in the form of a table, or you can write it in tabular form, or you can write it in probability histogram. So let's say, for example, in, this, in the experiment about throwing a die, the probability that four will appear in one throw of a die. So we go to the probability distribution table, and it's equal to one over six. What is the probability that in a throw of a pair of dice, the sum is going to be 6? So we go to this probability distribution. We look for 6, and it's, it's approximately 14% or 0 0.1400. Okay, so let us now bring a normal probability distribution. And the example that we had been using is the probability distribution of IQ. How do we interpret this? The mean is 100 points. The standard deviation is 15. Where did I get that 15? From the differences between intervals, okay? It's, this one is uh, positive 15 from here to there. The standard deviation is negative 15. How do we interpret the probability distribution of IQ? So let's say, for example, we have a population of adults and we are interested to know what is the probability that a randomly chosen person from this sample or from this population would have an IQ that is between 130 and 145. Okay, so we will look for... So we will look for that. The probability that the IQ is between 130 and 145. What we do is we go to the probability distribution of IQ and this one represents the probability that a randomly selected person would have an IQ that is between 130 and 145. So that's going to be equal to 0 0.0214 or 2.14%. What is the probability that a randomly selected person would have an IQ that is greater than 145? So how do we write that? So if we were to look at our normal curve, the region whose area will give this would be the region to the right of 145. Okay, so by the way, this one goes on to positive infinity. So how do we get the region under the normal curve from 145 going to, to positive infinity? How do we get it? Well, the area of the entire region under the curve is 1. So this is going to be equal to 1 minus, okay, this one, the area of all the region under the curve to the left of our mean is 0 0.5. And we will also subtract this part of our probability distribution. And if we were to subtract all of that from 1, the result would be 
the area under the curve from 145 to positive infinity. And that is the probability that a randomly selected person would have an IQ that is higher than 145. And what is that equal to? That is equal to... It's equal to 0 0.0014. The probability that a randomly selected person would have an IQ that is higher than 145 is 0.0014. Okay, so let us now go to the part on interpreting this, these numbers, okay, these areas as proportion of the population or proportion of a sample. So this is how we can interpret it. So let us look at this normal probability distribution. This is our mean. Okay, so if we were to add the two, 34.13% plus 34.13%, there sum is the area of the region under the curve from negative one standard deviation to one standard deviation above the mean. And that area is equal to 0 0.6426, or in percent, it's 64.26%. So how do we interpret that in terms of proportion? Well, what that means is 64.26% of the population, or of the sample, is within one standard deviation from the mean. So if we have a sample which is randomly selected from a population, 64.26% of this would show characteristics or would show the character trait that we are investigating in such a way that that character traits would be within one standard deviation from the mean. How about this one? Another interpretation of our normal curve. 47.72% of the population is between the mean and two standard deviation above the mean. Okay, where did I get 47.72%? Well, that is the sum of these two regions. This region is the combined region from the mean to two standard deviations. And in terms of proportion, what this is telling us is 47.72% of the sample or of the population is between the mean and two standard deviations above the mean. So again, if this is our population or sample, 47.72% of them would fall from the mean to two standard deviations above the mean. A random sample of 1,000 adult persons is selected from a town. If their IQ is assumed to follow a normal distribution, Make an intelligent guess. How many has an IQ that is greater than 115? How many has an IQ below 70? So how do we use our normal curve to answer those questions? How many has IQ greater than 115? So we will look for 115. The first thing that we must answer is what is the proportion of the population that has an IQ that is greater than 115. So in order to answer that, okay, we must get the area of the entire region under the curve to the right of 115. So we must get this. That will tell us the proportion of the population whose IQ is greater than 115. And what is that? That is equal to 0.1587. This one. Where did this come from? Well, again, the area under the curve, the area of the entire region under the curve is 1. And then we will subtract this. This one is equal to 0.5. The area of the region to the left of the mean is 0.5 plus this, 8413. And if we get the difference, the difference is 0 0.1587. So again, the proportion, the proportion of our sample that has an IQ greater than 115 is 0 0.1587. But that is not yet the answer to our question. 
So the number n, let's call it n, okay, of people who has an IQ that is greater than 115 is equal to, okay, the proportion, let's call that P, times the size of our sample, which is 1,000. And so that is equal to 0.1587 times 1,000, approximately 159. So approximately 159 persons would have an IQ that is greater than 115. How about the second question? How many has an IQ that is below 70? So first, we get the proportion of the sample that would have an IQ that is below that is below 70. And the proportion is equal to the area of the region under the curve to the left of 70. And what is that equal to? Again, just like what we did with the first question, the area of the entire region un under the curve is 1. And then we subtract all these regions to the right of 70. And what is that? So it's going to be 1 minus... So the proportion of the sample who are likely to have an IQ that is below 70 is 0 0.0228 or 2.28%. So just exactly how many persons out of 1,000 would likely have an IQ of less than 70? So again, what we do is, so that's going to be N is equal to the proportion times the size of our sample. And that is equal to P times N, P is equal to 0 0.0228, our sample size is 1,000, so approximately 23.